Hey, y'all. What's up? It's Coach Herb and my girl, B. And we are joined with hey, everybody. a How you bunch doing? of fabulous young ladies. And I'm going to probably mess up some names. So let me start with Samantha and Bianca and... Sadira. Miss Virginia. Sadira? Yes. Oh, yes. Got it. Got it, Sadira. And so they're going to be joining us today. Doing, uh, we're going to, uh, the topics of our show is about community outreach. So, um, and Mr. Ben, of course, is always with us. And so, hey, Mr. Ben, how are you? Good. How's everyone doing tonight? Hey, um, thank you. Great. It'll be great if, if you guys can give us a really, really quick synopsis about who you are and what you do and all of that. I don't know whether that's quick or not, but. How about how about Samantha? Yeah, Let's we'll have Samantha. yes. Hi, my name is Samantha Beavers, and I'm here representing Rest and Strong this evening. Um, I'm a mom and a Navy wife, and um, Rest and Strong is just about community. Yeah. And your husband is here, or he's he's here. Away. He's here. Good. 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 Yeah. The more we we need him here right now, we do yeah, need him here. Anywhere else, yeah. And, uh, and Bianca. What about Ms. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Bianca. Uh, uh, wait. Oh my God. All right, I'm already stum stumbling, but that's okay. Okay. So my name's Bianca Naku, and I am a student at George Mason University. I'm in my third year, and I also have a full-time job doing IT and cybersecurity. Wow. And uh, yes, that is what I do. Yes, get me Bianca. <laughs> okay, all right, that's enough of that. <laughs> well, thanks, Bianca. Thank you. Me? And Miss Virginia? Virginia, I am your Miss Virginia Cosmos USA. My name is Sadira, um, and I am all about community service and beauty and um, women's empowerment. Through the community. So what can we? So what can we do about my face? Can we do anything to improve? <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to do about your face? <laughs> oh man, you know it needs a lot of work. Um, so um, I guess Mr. Ben is going to lead us into what we need. We're talking about tonight, um, which is community outreach and all that jazz. Yeah. So, so um, uh, yeah, yeah, this week's episode was is about community outreach. And um, honestly, last uh, yesterday, we had a really great example of that here uh, locally in Reston. Um, Reston Strong put on a great peaceful demonstration uh, just right off of uh, Reston Parkway. Um, so we kind of wanted to uh, talk about that a little bit. I know Coach Herb, you ended up uh, being able to get out there with your family and some friends. So uh, would you be able to talk a little bit about your experience? Yeah, um, I, I, was, I was very, very pleasantly surprised, uh, first of all, how organized it was because for a, for a split second I was like okay so what a, what am I going to do what do I need to do do I need to stand off to the side social distance of course um, and, but I felt like it was very 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 well organized and my family thoroughly enjoyed it which which is kind of like a weird thing to say because um, because of what we're basically fighting for um, it's kind of near and dear to my heart because I've also been through some things with with the with the law, and it's been like every experience has been um, not every experience has been negative, but a lot of them have because of the fact that of who I am. Um, they automatically think that I'm a threat, so they get very very um, antsy, and it makes me extremely nervous. I I'm constantly talking to my son about, hey, whatever it takes, man, just put your hands where where it needs to be. Do not do anything and all of that stuff. But oh, circle back around, I just felt like um, the moment was really positive and and going forward, I think you know, I'm I'm glad that you ladies um, participated in doing this um, when. The women's organization did a real good job of letting it letting it flow like it did. Okay, great, um, Bianca. I know 
Um, you really wanted to get out and about last night, but you know, life doesn't always go exactly as planned. So uh, can you explain <laughs> yeah. a little bit about what your you and your family ended up doing? Because I, I think that's a still a great story and you know, it doesn't you know, we can't always all be together, but we can still uh, yeah. fight in cause. Yeah, so I went through meltdown uh, time at my home with my toddlers, basically. So we had, um, around our pond, we decided to have our child walk around with her sign. And, you know, it read Black Lives Matter. And that actually prompted people to come through and have signage actually. Uh, so we've been seeing people walk around our pond today with signs that I think is very motivating that my three-year-old <laughs> motivated individuals to walk around our neighborhood. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool and we weren't able to get out there. So we decided to do that. Awesome. Um, I was going to say too, I know um, uh, earlier when uh, we were kind of getting ready for the episode, um, Miss Virginia was actually speaking about how she was able to come out to the, to the area and uh, see kind of the demonstration for herself too. So how, how did you feel like uh, it was well put together or how did the kind of the vibe feel for you for the event? Um, it was very well put together. Um, like Herbert said, it was very well organized. Um, just to be in the close proximity that we were in, I don't know, it may have been like about a mile or more. Um, it was just amazing to see everybody coming together and still, you know, be socially distant and obey the law. But just to have that kind of um, support in a community like Reston, I think that spoke volumes. And just to know that a group of people put that together and so many people were on one accord with it, I think that also speaks major to the kind of people we're around and the type of environment that we're in. Great. Um, Sam and B. Uh uh, Bianca, what did you guys, um, did you guys get a, not maybe not an official head count, because I actually uh, was happened to be right there because I live less than a block away and really wanted to be there to support, but how many people do you guys roughly think attended the, uh, the demonstration? We believe it was over 2,000. Um, the last count that I heard about halfway through was 1,600 from the Fairfax County police officers that were riding through on their bicycles. Wow. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. That is amazing. I mean, it was it was really truly it was actually kind of strange because at first I thought you know we were starting at the bridge, but I guess because of the social distancing, it kept on going down further down on Reston Parkway, all the way past PetSmart. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because people, well, a friend of mine texted me and they were like, "Where are you?" And I was like, "Well, I'm right here by the bridge." And they were like, "Well, we're all the way up there by." Um, the spectrum and I was like what I don't I don't understand I thought everybody was kind of like going to be here all the way to the town center which was I felt was like oh my god that's a lot of people but it I guess must have had, had to go a little further because the amount of people that showed up so that was really great it was very exciting to me because um, I tend to know a few people <laughs> which uh, you know so I was seeing faces but they they saw me but didn't recognize me at first and then when they when I pulled the mask off. <laughs> that was me. Bianca, yeah. <laughs> was like, who's this guy walking up on me like this? <laughs> and I was like, hey, it's just me. That's She's iconic, like, oh my God. iconic beard, I'm telling you. <laughs> how people know you. Yeah. So I, I thought it was really, really cool that um, that amount of people came out and you know, I really wish it didn't have to be like this because it actually is a negative thing, which hopefully it will turn into a positive. So, but I think this community has that the, the, the type of people that I hope the rest of the country starts to, you know, vibe with that type of lifestyle and, and stuff like that. So what'd you think, Miss uh, Bianca? Yeah. So yes. for myself, moving from the city, right? I I didn't know what to expect moving out here. I don't know. It's been like a amazing opportunity to live like in this neighborhood that feels welcoming. 
I've read a lot of history about how African Americans were allowed to um, kind of just be welcome here in the beginning and back in like the 60s and 70s when this community was developing um, under Bob Simon. So I just, I'm very thankful that they, that we just feel uh, welcome. How about that? And so to see everybody come together and hear that it's like 2,000 people, you know, you never know, it might be more came together, especially because people were doing things at home as well. So, um, no, know. Was, you know, it was I mean, a lot of dry, a lot, a lot of people driving through with signs as well. Yeah, it was really, it was really cool. Like, uh, but they were, I, I literally saw like five or six people in the same car several times. Like they went down Reston Parkway, turned around, came back up, went all the way down to Baron Cameron, turned around, came back up, and they just kept on driving up and down. And then also mm -hmm. went through the town center. And and I thought I was like, yeah, you see, you know, this community is just, it's a different community. I, I kind of tell people it's like we live in a bubble because of the fact that, you know, nobody really deals with it in the same way as far as racial tension. And it begs, it begs to the question, like, I try to explain to a, a um, a, a friend of mine who's um, white that this actually happened and they were like so so overwhelmed and so confused as to why people were, were treated like that you know so would you you know you brought up a good point about being kind of it feels like a little bit of a bubble here possibly in Reston mm -hmm. but you know we're about 30 minutes away from DC, not very far at all. Um, you guys, um, Herbert, B., Herbert B., do you guys know people who have been to the demonstrations uh, in DC who maybe either came to the ones here in Reston or they had conversations about the DC demonstration? Mm. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah go ahead, Bianca. Thank you, Bianca. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went to DC twice for two different protests. The first one was a, a week ago, maybe on Sunday. And that was a totally different vibe from what I experienced like this past weekend. Uh, so on Sunday, it was like very, very, very tension. -filled. You know, like tear gas was thrown and then people were just angry. They were so angry. And like, you couldn't help but like just feel the emotion. It was all there. It was insane. And for it to not affect you, that, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, but uh, the protest that was like uh, this past Saturday, I believe, uh, that one was a very different vibe. It had like, uh, they called it Mochella, and they played a lot of go go music, which was so cool. Because it was so just amazing, and everyone was just vibing, and they were just like, I don't know. Uh, it was just, I don't know. Honestly, I am like speechless. I'm also not very eloquent, but also I think um, those two vibes are very different, but then it just shows you like the way that you could protest things and approach them in different ways as well. You know, so like on one hand, there is like that anger and you have to feel that anger so you can properly fight, you know? And you have to let that anger push you towards progress, in my opinion. But then there's also like, you have to feel the strength in community, in peaceful protest. And you have to kind of remind yourself that yes, I am angry, but there are other avenues in which I can like attack this problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that is what I have to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Coach, what about you? Do, has your son gone out into D.C. or done uh, anything like that? Um, five times to wow, D.C. okay. Yeah. Um, tonight, he's actually um, protesting in Richmond. Wow. So he's, um, he's taking a, a different approach than other, other peers of his. Um, he just feels like it's time for a major change. I think he, um, because he, he also um, is kind of a history buff. So he likes 
um, to study history, but he's finding out, like a lot of us are, that history is um, not necessarily told the right way. So he's finding it, he's getting a lot of information that is like, oh my God, did you know this? So like sometimes at dinner, it's basically us saying one thing and then him spewing, going off about several different subjects or several diff different people in history that sometimes we we don't even know as a family and we're like wow you know and he, so he's he's really into it and i think he just feels like the world should be a better place mm -hmm. so for his generation and y'all generation you young folks um this is the time to actually make a change in and what um what this world what you want this world to be you know so i'm, I'm very proud of him i'm uh, you know, his mom was very concerned because he he was also down there last Sunday, and he got he got pepper sprayed and shot with rubber bullets in D.C. Um, and in actuality, they were leaving, and the police pulled up in in like an SUV and started spraying a group of them, and which was very confusing to him because it wasn't it wasn't when they were supposed to be. Um, there so wow yeah oh, very you know so hopefully he's fine down in richmond i i don't know if they're going to protest for that long um they went down this afternoon and so and then he says he's going to try to get back this evening so tonight do you, um this can be a question kind of posed to the group but do we feel like this is um different different than you know what we kind of experienced in the last five, 10 years, and then, you know, Herb, I'll ask you about maybe even further uh, back uh, when you were uh, kind of younger and in our, uh, in your teens or in your uh, early yeah. 20s, things like that. But yeah. right now, does this feel different than, you know, just five or 10 years ago, you know, that we always kind of hear about these things cropping up and there was uh, issues, uh, Colin Kaepernick taking the knee during mm -hmm. the NFL and things right. like that. I'll let you, I'll let you younger folks answer the most recent ones. And I'll go back to the Rodney King because I was there and I was around and it was a totally different vibe from that now it is. So you go go ahead and anybody feel free to step in. Um, Miss Virginia, go ahead, you can speak and then we'll maybe go to Samantha and Bianca. Okay, um, so I think that uh, five to 10 years ago, I don't know if, obviously we were younger, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know if we felt the authority um, or we felt the the necessity of us being able to take a stand and raise our voice. I think now with, although things have been taped and filmed before, I don't know if the hype was as big or if the the willpower behind it was as big. Because of course, you know, you get upset and you protest, you take a knee. Um, but for this to be going on for about a good solid week and you see every state and you see countries getting involved, um, there's more of a backing now. Whereas you might have just saw, you know, certain pockets of the United States um, mm -hmm. that would take a stand or they, it would happen at different times. But for everybody yeah. to have that unity together, I think that makes a much bigger statement. Um, and then, you know, you have different groups of people. You have people who are actually protesting for the social injustice, but you also have, you know, the people who start the riots and the chaos and the confusion. And you also have the police that entice that kind of stuff. So when you start taking away certain aspects, like when you remove the police force, then you'll get uh, a different kind of protest. Like Bianca was saying, you'll get a protest with a different kind of vibe versus when you have a police force and presence there, you automatically as a protester have to have your guard up because these are the same people that we're accusing of an injustice. So you don't know what the reaction's gonna be. Um, and then even on a, a smaller scale, but a greater scale, even like when with the rest in, with Rustin Strong, there were police out there, but their police were standing for the cause. They were actually protecting the citizens. You have to be aware of what kind of police um, and what kind of people are in your midst. That's extremely important because that literally makes all the difference of how your protest is gonna run and how things will turn out. Well said. Miss Samantha, like that. Miss Samantha yeah. yes. Go ahead, Samantha. Um. Well, I would be lying if I said 20 years ago, I understood all of this. Mm 
Um, I have been married for 14 years to a wonderful black man and I have a son. And I have understood more and more over the course of our marriage. And I think things are very different and have changed quite a bit just over the past year. But this, what's going on right now, is very, very different than, say, what happened with Colin Kaepernick and the NFL. Mm -hmm. There wasn't enough support for him at the time to keep it moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no, I agree with you. Um, and yeah. I hope that things now have enough support to see real change for my child and every other child out there. Great point. But if I can just piggyback off of what Samantha said, I think also at this time, because we are so aware of this happening, people are doing their own research. And we realize, um, like Herbert said, the, the history that we're taught in a textbook is not the history that, that was actual reality at the time they were going through that. Like we go mm -hmm. from slavery to discovering America to slavery to, okay, now we're a melting pot. Nobody talks about the pockets except for your Martin Luther King Jr. and you know, well-known people they want you to know about. But when you do that research on your own, you're definitely gonna have dinner discussions. You're definitely gonna have different kinds. Sorry guys. You're definitely gonna have different kinds of emotions and different kinds of topics that you aren't taught in the classroom. So that's mm -hmm. another important factor of you know being able to be educated and educate yourself on your history or your husband's history. Because mm -hmm. now that's history too, for sure. Mm -hmm. I do remember um, I took a, for my community college degree, like I took a, um, a history class and it was taught by this Native American teacher. His name, I remember his name, I think it's Carol. Carol. But, um, uh, he, uh, he basically, on the syllabus, like he assigned us this book that was titled Lies That My Teachers Told Me. And that was really eye-opening for me. And I think, like, for uh, the class itself, was very eye-opening that we could voice our opinions based off of, like, the facts that they didn't teach you back in high school. You know, and, like, these are the real truths, but they're just kind of, like, suppressed because, like, people just want to... I don't, I don't know why the syllabi like in high schools are just taught so kind of like so i don't know i don't know they're just so suppressed and for for them to hide that kind of history how are we supposed to learn about the real horrors of history and um just learn not to do them again if they're just hidden from us and i think with the changes of like social media and just everyone I think it's because everyone has time right now. They are just, they can't ignore anything. They can't go, oh, I was going to go to the protest, but I have vacation plans, so I'm not going to go to that protest. Mm -hmm. Here we are. We've all got time. We mm -hmm. all can see everything that's happening on social media because we have, like, nothing else to do, literally, except for stare mm -hmm. at our phones. And I'm not... I'm not saying that like Corona is a good thing, but also it has given us like a good chunk of time to like reflect about what's happening in society. Yeah, so. perspective. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. We've been I talking mean, about yeah. in our household how mm -hmm. we are planning to teach our children about race and history and things like that because I mean it's just it's crazy and my children, I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old, and I'm already trying to figure out how I'm going to speak to them about history, which I didn't think about that before. Um, and I feel like now is the time to actually like start to get them history books and show them like, hey, this is what's happening. And because I don't think that it's going to happen until about two years from now when she's in elementary school, but who knows what's going to happen in between that time frame. Um, that she already can't start to learn, basically. 
So I'm excited about history and it's in a sense right now because it's 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 sad because um, it's already been happening, but it is a good time to to speak out loud. I feel like. I mean, we definitely need to learn each other. Um, it's funny because the conversations that I would have with my uh, white friends are totally different than the conversations that I'm having with a lot of my black friends and, and people of color. Um, it's, it's because I have a very broad group of friends, basically. Uh, we're all over the map. I have Jewish, black, Asian. I mean, it's, it's every, every, every walk of life um, I'm, I'm in contact with. And, um, it was kind of kind of odd because you know I just posed a simple a simple question like hey when your child uh, when you know when you were a kid did your mom ever tell you hey when you're in the, in a group of people and the police come or you're you know doing something how do you act and you know my mom would always tell me hey don't move, say yes, sir, no, sir. Um, do not have any, any, any type of reaction to anything they say. Just basically obey what they are saying to you until you get out of there because of the fact that if you, if you react to them, that gives them the opportunity to do something to you. And so the conversation is continuing with my son and with my daughter. And it's just funny because like, it's just almost like I grew up, my mom, you know, wash your hands, brush your teeth. Also be careful of the police, which was, you know, and then I asked my friends that and they were like, what? Uh, I don't remember that conversation with my mom or dad about how I should act when a police officer comes because it doesn't compute. It doesn't it, it didn't it doesn't affect them in that way. It's it's kind of kind of um crazy to say, but like I grew up having that in the back of my mind all the time. And and a lot of my friends don't. And it's it's sad because I shouldn't have to be like that. And my, I shouldn't have to tell my son that. He needs to be very, very conscious of how he speaks to um, an officer of the law, which is, it's bad and, you know, also kind of self-serving. It's almost a survival mode all the time, you know, so. Yeah. Times are ch times are changing, man, and it is because of time. We don't we don't we have a lot more time. There's no sports. There's no other things to distract people, which is kind of a blessing. The corona and everything else has has shifted the narrative to where we are going to be able to um, grow as a people. You know, so I'm actually kind of um, excited about what's to come, hopefully, you know. Um, still in the back of my mind, I don't know how it's gonna work, you know. All I say is I tell every young person that I speak to, is like you have to also do the research and see who you are voting for. Everybody's focused so much on the president, but it's actually not the president. It's actually everybody that, um, their local politicians that they need to really focus on and how they're going to react to this situation and how they're going to help um, write the correct um, legislations and bills and all of that stuff to help things going forward and help us understand each other. It's all about love and positive, positive vibes. So hopefully it gets better and better as we go forward and like it like you you younger you young ladies teach your kids you know about history and about and 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 
all of that stuff and all the men too it's like you have to continuously talk to your kid um i know samantha your husband probably talks to you about all sorts of things that he's dealt with and and his growing up you know i don't know where y'all are during the riots so yeah so he he's definitely been front and center of the whole situation it's kind of funny because (laughs) while you're talking about the riots i hate to like take over this whole thing, but um, while you're talking about the riots, um, when I it, when it happened when I was here in Reston, it was um, they we didn't have the riots here, but there was a lot of hatred towards um, police and um, and a lot of um, unrest between some friends. Like you know, I would go to uh, visit a friend in Arlington, and you know. He was um, he was a f- fellow basketball player that I played against, so we kind of vibed and knew each other. And he was like, "Hey, you know, let's go to this park." And I was like, "No, I thought we were going to this other park." And he, you know, at that time, one of the parks was like kind of a mixed crowd, and the other one was more predominantly black. And he was like, "No, I want to go here this this time around because I don't want to be around um, these white guys that I know that are kind of like on the fence of." And I was like, really? And I was like, wow, it's, things things are shifting in that way too because, you know, and it's it's sad because I generally don't look at people that way. I just, I know what color you are, but I don't look at you in, in any, uh, any other type of way besides just knowing who you, who you are. I was going, so. um, you know, with, with all that being said, I think it's a great segue to kind of uh, talk to our, our guests here to kind of get a little bit more, uh, learn about them and, and uh, see about why, you know, they're taking the stances that they're taking and, and what they kind of have to say. So a uh, question kind of posed to S- uh, Samantha and Bianca. Um, Herb already asked you a little bit about your mission and cause, which I think it's a, it's a great one to have here, especially uh, in a community like Reston, but what makes Reston feel more like a home or community for you and has it kind of inspired or uh, made you feel like you need to give back? Well, um, being a military family, the easiest way to integrate with the community is to join the community. So when you start to give back, you learn a lot more about the community and because you can become part of it. So I actually came from the Philippines uh, about 10 years ago. And for about six months in the beginning, I lived in Great Falls and you know, that area is like predominantly white. And I went to Langley High School for like about three months, three months. And literally it was like, you know, a bunch of white people, there were like maybe a handful of colored people and like black mm-hmm. people. But then when I moved to South Lakes, that was just like completely different. And it was like such a big melting pot of people with different interests. And that really like kind of invigorated me. And then, you know, I also live like right across Lake Ann. And Lake Ann is like such a loving community. So yeah. Yeah. So that I don't beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, um uh just coming from the philippines into like such a welcoming environment that really just made me want to kind of be part of the community and so i did a lot of like organizing back when i worked at lake ann as well and um but what really made me want to do this was there was during that one protest in DC, there was a sign or there was like some graffiti on the wall that said, why do black people have to tell you that we matter too? And that really, 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 ah, let it cry. Okay, so that really, really hit me hard. And it just like, it felt like such a, felt like such a, like a gut punch, you know? Like you don't realize like, what people go through until you see all of this going on and so that really inspired me to like um to try to organize this thing for Reston because I felt like this community has accepted me I'm colored you know like this and 
all you guys know Sam, you guys know Khalid, like those are my homies, those are my boys. And um they have just like accepted me with open arms. And for me to not do anything, I just I just had to. Like there was no like question about it. So mm -hmm. no, no, I feel you, Beyonce, I feel you. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> No, it's, it's, you know, really great sentiment. I mean, it's, um, you know, Reston is a, is a great melting pot. Uh, I've worked here for 16 years and live now here for three years. And yeah, things have changed, like the town center from when I first started here. But, you know, the, the community has not changed. The, the feeling that this, that this uh, area has is really, really nice. And um, uh, especially for Samantha, you, since you kind of move around a bit, being in the military family, where there's some common uh things that you, you know, thought about the rest in or Northern Virginia area, maybe when you got here, you, did, you realize like, oh, that's not true, or uh, this is very true. Are there any kind of uh, misconceptions that uh, you would want listeners who maybe aren't from this area to know about uh, rest in or Northern Virginia? Well, I believe that rest in, people think that Northern Virginia is extremely wealthy. While there is a lot of wealth here, rest in, uh, doing a little math this afternoon, there mm -hmm. are, in 2018, 2019 school year, the elementary schools only, had 5,016 children enrolled. Of those mm -hmm. 5,016 children, 1,494 yep. of them were on free and reduced lunch. So that's a yep. full one third yeah. of our school kids getting free and reduced lunch. Yep. That is uh, the funny. entire population of Dogwood Elementary. So yeah. kind of a funny side note joke. Um, when Bianca first moved here, I said, hey, you know, um, we should, we should, you know, as a joke, I said, you, we should go to the ghetto. She was like, what? Reston doesn't have a ghetto. <laughs> I was like, uh, yes, they do. It's not, it's not, it's not, we don't like to call it the ghetto, <laughs> but you know, that's, you know, just to let you know that there is, um, people that have Preston um, has an you know, underserved community yes yes they well do yes <laughs> but you she, know, was, she was in shock she was like was that me or was that no, no. Which no me I literally when I first moved here I was I just I remember that conversation because I was yeah. shocked and I was very confused as well because I wasn't aware of Fairfax County having any type of underserved communities, right? So I lived in Maryland and DC and coming from there, I was like, you know, moving to Reston, everybody has money and, you know, it feels mm -hmm. like there's a lot of wealth there and cool. it just feels, it feels that way, right? And then now living there, I'm way. like, oh, there are so many opportunities to help individuals who are in need and I see the need in the community and I live up the street from Cornerstones and I just, I see so many different things happening around me where I didn't necessarily know that from even just working here, right? So now that I live here, I'm like, wow, this is, this is not what I imagined at all. And I just want to help in any way that I can. Most of our schools have food pantries in them. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's funny because um, you know, that Mr. Simon actually that was one of his major goals was not to just have an area where it was just all well to do middle class and well to do families. He was like, Look, it has to be a melting pot. It has to be a, a whole lot of different people so you can get to know each individual by their circumstances um, by what they, you know, how they grew up or how they live. And, and so, you know, every, and it's continuing because even, even in the, uh, even where like Bianca lives or um, even where I live in this neighborhood, um, I live in a single family home, but there's houses in this neighborhood that are, um, provided for families that are um, on the lower spectrum on the income basis. But it's, it's like, you wouldn't know it driving through, but, but it is which, is, which is actually really cool to me because 
I came from that type of situation when I first came to the States. So um, I, I grew up and on, um, on the other side of Reston where everybody, the whole neighborhood was pretty much kind of on the systems. Um, and, you know, it, it gives you a, a, a sense of perspective as to how this area is really, really um, a, a great community. And it, I wish the model could be everywhere, but, you know, it's not set up like that, so. And I, and I know Herb asked a little earlier about, um, you know, what, um, what kind of causes or things that um, you guys are going to maybe do another demonstration for, or if you guys are going to do another one uh, revolving around the Black Lives Matter. Are there any other uh, issues or causes in this area, Samantha or Bianca, that you guys, um, you know, are, just, you don't have to have any concrete plans, but would like to, you know, in the future, near future, uh, kind of bring attention to so people here in wrestling uh, yeah. in the general area can come out to and support and become get more and, knowledge. Uh, yep, and Miss Virginia, what do you what do you have planned? Uh, oh, I let you guys answer first. <laughs> we have I'm two um, <laughs> two pods still collecting food. One at Cornerstones and one at the Jewish Congregation. Okay. And we have two petitions that are that have been signed and that are we are trying to present to uh, the Fairfax County Police Department and the Commonwealth Attorney, uh, the Commonwealth Attorney asking for justice for B. John. Okay. Great. So those, uh, are, those are our current plans. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to, um, and to, so to kind of, to Herb's point, uh, we'll transition over to asking Miss Virginia. Um, I know we kind of spent a, a good chunk of time talking to Arrested now too, but um, you know, Bianca introduced us to you and uh, we really are very fortunate to have you kind of join us and wanted to kind of learn a little bit more about uh, you and, and um, your path to kind of taking on the role that you're in now. So what does it mean to you to become Miss Virginia Cosmos? Um. More than anything, I think being able to be Miss Virginia Cosmos has just been, it's really been an eye-opening experience for me. It allows my platform um, to obviously be bigger. And my platform is women's and girls' empowerment and then women in political offices. So okay. um, it really ties into this because it, it lets, obviously, women and little girls know that we can make a change. I think a lot of the time, I guess not recently, but if you look five years back, you don't see a lot of women or a lot of women in color, women of color in political office. Um, so I think it's important to be able to have that representation in the forefront and then have that representation of a woman, period. Because at the end of the day, no matter what your color is, we're, we're still women. Um, and that's the thing that will link us all together. So just being able to show that um, and have girls like me and Princess Fiona, we have chats and everything. And I hope that's something that she'll remember and know, like, I'm, I'm a woman, yes, but I am on the same playing field as a male. I still can make a change. Um, and my opinion matters. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure she's going to remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. If you don't know, oh, she talks Fiona. about it. <laughs> <laughs> that girl is something else. I call her Correct. Miss Sissy, Miss... Princess, that, that one there, boy. She she's got a she's gonna be a good one. She's smart. She <laughs> oh, remembers smart. everything. <laughs> uh, Miss Virginia, where would you um, what would be a piece of advice that you'd like to give um, young boys or girls uh, starting out? Um, girls maybe on the pageant circuit, or um, if they if you were to kind of have a conversation with maybe Fiona in a couple of years when she starts to kind of uh, vision what she wants to be. Grows up a little bit more, uh, uh, going off to college or getting uh, that career started. Um, I think, well, I, a misconception is that pageants are for girls. There are male pageants, um, and it helps with their public speaking too. So I would definitely say, you know, if there is a male in your life that wants to do a pageant, promote that. Um, and like I said, it allows them to have that that platform in the forefront to really just obtain any dream that they have um to young men and young women going off to college going off to middle school high school um i would really just say figure it figure out what it is you want to do and where you can leave your mark 
and make it like nothing is too little or too big for you to really have a passion about and really make a mark no matter where you are like whether it's on a local scale or on a larger scale it all makes a difference awesome is there um a piece of advice looking back especially uh where you are now that you, maybe you had uh wished you would receive when you were younger or that um you really could uh instill upon um somebody who uh does want to want to uh, be a, a senator, a congressman, or woman um, who just wants to really kind of, uh, especially the movements that are going on now, uh, kind of get the become in power so they can make those changes and uh, help better their future. Absolutely, um, it would just be really to follow through. Whatever you start, see it through the end. Um, like the ladies of Rushton Strong, if they had the vision, they had to see it through. They had to see that the protest was done. Um, cause they could have stopped halfway, but would the change really have been made? So following through is literally the most important thing you can probably do. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I know, um, it's, it's a great, uh, thing for our listeners to hear is that, you know, it, it just takes a little spark, but you have to follow through. You can't just, uh, kind of give up on, uh, what matters to you most. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for coming and joining us. Um, yes. I would yes. like to say I would I appreciate you all for um, sitting down and probably let me speak too much. <laughs> no, nah, man. I'm, I'm, no, I'm sorry, but um, at this time, you know, just just um, like all this time spending with my son um, and talking to him about how this this world is it's, it's time for a change and I think he he totally understands that and as far as politics I don't know if he would really ever get into that um, but um, he's definitely you know ready for something better for his his future and his kids future and all of that stuff so I appreciate you ladies for um, always being great mentors to our children and continue to do positive things in the community will definitely help us um, be better people. So that's all I got for y'all tonight. Um, does anybody and I have appreciate anything else? you ladies joining us. Yes. Um, it, uh, I just really appreciate it because it speaks a lot to what's happening right now, how we can all come together and just have a conversation about what's going on um, all around. So thank you all. Thank yeah. you so much for doing what you do in the community and what you're going to be doing in the community in the future. And I can't wait to see what we all can do to better the world, basically. Yeah, yeah I to see you guys at the YMCA. <laughs> and I'm, I was so nervous because yesterday I was screaming so much I thought I was going to lose my voice for like for a while but I'm glad mm -hmm. it came back tonight so um, I, I was doing a lot of screaming yesterday yeah. which I don't know I don't know how my son has done it for five but uh, yeah that helps too <laughs> My son, my son has done it, and he's doing it again tonight. I, I, I'm like, how do you, how can you keep your voice going like that? Like, it's, hey, he got it in him. Yeah, yeah, I'm very proud of him, and so hopefully, hopefully, the world, um, you know, continues to build up and have kids similar to how he's, 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 he's making me proud just to know him. So it's actually a good thing. And I and I'm sure all my little ones are gonna be good ones too. Samantha, how old are your kids? He's eight. Eight. Okay. Eight years old. All right. I haven't met him yet. No. No. Okay. Because we would know each other if he was if he had met me. <laughs> <laughs> so it says well, thank you all. Yeah. Coach. Yeah, coach yeah. everything. I coach <laughs> everything, but um, basketball, soccer, t-ball, okay. um, uh, all the stuff we do at the Y, I'm, I'm the guy. 
All so right. Everything that deals with all the youngsters. But it's a lot of fun. It keeps me young. You couldn't tell with the with the beard, but it keeps me young. <laughs> Well, thank, well, thank you, you all ladies. for joining us. Thank you yeah. so much for having me. Thank yes. Thanks and for uh, thanks thank, for Yes. I was just about to say Virginia. that. Virginia. I'm going to learn your name, Miss Virginia. I swear I am. I know. I'm going to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for my Instagram follow. Okay. Oh yeah, we'll definitely get on that and check and right. check us all out when we uh, post our next podcast. Thank you all for joining us and uh, yeah, have a great night. So have a great yeah. night. I want a t-shirt. Um, whoever has a t-shirt, they can send it to me. <laughs> <laughs>